Hello and welcome to another episode of the African Five Aside podcast. My name is Meher Mizahi. I'm your host uh, here in Algiers today. This podcast, as always, is brought to you by the good folks over at www.africasacountry.com. Uh, today I'm joined by a Cameroonian colleague, uh, freelance football journalist Giovanni Bamba. Uh, and if you do, just a, a quick note before we begin, if you do hear some drilling, my neighbor seems to be doing some renovations. I don't think he's drilling for anything. He just seems to be poking a thousand holes into the wall. Anyways, Gio, <laughs> let's talk about Cameroon, man. Cameroon, last time we were really paying attention to them was at the World Cup. It seemed like a, a mixed bag at the World Cup. Uh, we had uh, some pretty poor first match and second match, but then they came alive against Brazil. They won in that match against Brazil. Um, what's been going on since the World Cup for the Cameroonian national team? Well, uh, we've been active since the, the World Cup. Uh, we had to play for the, the AFCON qualifiers. And uh, yeah, we had to grind our results. We're in a group uh, with Kenya, Burundi, and Namibia. One would have expected Cameroon to just, you know, ride over the those other teams, but then we had a quite a tough patch. We had to qualify. We had to play for the AFCON on the last game day against Burundi. And true that we got a convincing 3-0 victory over Burundi. So, but then it was a really, you know, tricky group for Cameroon and Cameroonians as a whole, because we didn't expect to be taken right up to the final day against against Burundi. And it was just on, on panic, bad panic mood, if you ask me most uh, journalists and, of course, fans that, that watch that game because the win for Burundi would have you know, completely turned the, the, the table on its head. Namibia had already sealed through after their good performance against Cameroon here in, in Cameroon in Yaoundé, a draw, and then a win over there in uh, in South Africa. So it, it was really a tricky one. But, you know, thankfully, the WTO Lions got through. And, uh, yeah, we're just looking at the, the AFCON, like Rigo Song's second major tournament after the World Cup. It's true that the, the president of the Cameroonian Football Federation, Samuel Lito, did say that he wanted to play seven games at the level of the World Cup, which entails playing the finals. But then, you know, uh, we, didn't, we didn't make it past the group stage. But then we had a, a good showing. It wasn't an embarrassment like what happened in 2014, uh, 2010 in, 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 in South Africa. It wasn't a complete embarrassment. We won a game against uh, Brazil, had a parity against against Serbia. Uh, then we lost against against Switzerland. So I do think that uh, we're going to judge Rigo Besson from now hence because then he just took the team like four months before the World Cup. So he, he was always saying in his presses that he really needed time to work with the team and see what he could bring in. So now it's the AFCON. He's been in the, in the dugout for close to a year now or more. So... Uh, we're going to judge him and, and see how he, he performs in this second major tournament he's taking over. Because the AFCON and Cameroon, I think Cameroon played really well. I mean, they were probably one of the, maybe the strongest side in terms of performances. Um, that attacking line of, you know, Abubakar and Carl Tokoe Kambi and uh, Mumin Gamala as well. I think they combined very, very well. Um, Brian Mbuemo for me, you know, started the season really, really hot. Unfortunately, he's going to miss this tournament with injury. How big of a loss is that? And are there any other losses or additions that you see that have come into the side or are leaving the side that will be impacting Cameroon at the upcoming AFCON? I think Brian Bermo could be the difference between Cameroon having a good and a bad AFCON. That's how good he is for, for club and country. It's not just for, for country, because even at the level of Brentford, they've been having a, a queue of bad performances here, and Ivan Tony now missing in the team. With the Indomitable Lions, he was just beginning to pick steam, yeah? He was just beginning to pick steam with the Indomitable Lions. He scored in the World Cup qualifiers against Mauritius. He scored uh, against against Mexico in, 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 in the friendly that we, we had last time out in the U.S. He equally scored against, against Burundi. Uh, so he was just beginning to pick steam and lining up a couple of good performances when we needed him to do so. And um, it's just bad news that, you know, he's missing out of, of, of the list due to, to injury. He himself would have loved to give a good account of himself, given the fact that he didn't have a, a proper World Cup as well with the Indomitable Lions. So I don't think that he's going to be a big, big miss. Uh, Brian Bemo And uh, yeah, a couple of others as well. Right? Maxim Shupumotin wasn't called up for for. The coach said for, for reasons best known to him, he decided to do with youth. 
And uh, yeah, I think Eric Maxim Shukumoting, he too would have had, you know, an impact. He he's aging, but he's aging like fine wine. I mean, he's not had as much as much game time at Bayern because of Harry Kane, who just came in. Uh, you know, he's doing his thing. Uh so I do think that probably Eric Maxim Shukumoting is one you never can take your eyes off. Ma Martin Hongla as well. He was the lead assist provider at the Total Energy African 2021 year in Cameroon alongside five Collins. They both had three assists to their names. He too has been missing out of, of the puzzle. So I think that he too would have, you know, had a word or two to, to say. Uh, there's Pierre Kunde Malong as well. Uh, he too is not going to be taking part in the in the AFCON, you know, after playing the, the, the 2019 edition, the 2021 edition, massive experience he would have brought to the middle of the pack. But then, like I said earlier, on Rigo Bessong has decided to do with youth. And uh, yeah, we're going to, you know, assess how that goes after the tournament. But Cameroon is uh, an unforgiving nation. If it goes badly, then he will take some stick. To be, I, I believe he will take some stick and Good measure for that because it's left out quite a good number of experienced players we are used to. So let's see how that one pans out. So so let's talk about Rigo Bersang. Um, because he was in charge of the Olympic team, right? Prior to him coming to the senior team. Uh yeah. from what I understand, the results were mixed. What was the logic from firing, you know, Concesa, who had a good AFCON, and bringing in uh Rigo Bersang? Well, why, number one? And number two, uh, what was the reaction from from the public when Eto named Song as the coach. And has he lived up to expectations so far? I know it's only been a year, but so far, how has it been? It's only been a year of a mediocre performance from Rigo Song, And like you quite rightly said, he was in charge of the Olympic team, the under-23s. Before that, he was in charge of the Shan side, uh, the the Prim, as they are called this way, the Intermediate Lions. And he didn't make it out of the group stage. In the 2018, uh, Shanda was played in Morocco. In charge of the, the under-23s team uh, at the AFCON as well in Egypt, he didn't make it in 2019, I think. He didn't make it out of the group stage with that selection. So it was um, kind of a surprise when he was named national team coach at the time, you know, because make no mistake about it, Rigobert Songbahanak is a legend in our country, on the African continent and in the world stage. But the time he got the job, I think he would have you know, done more, maybe locally take up a team or on the African continent. But it came out, it, it came up as a surprise, a huge surprise to me. Uh, I respect uh, Rigo Belson Bahanak, but uh, as a coach, I think he still needed to learn quite a lot before taking charge of the Indomitable Lions. I mean, this is one of Africa's best side, five-time Af AFCON winners. Only Egypt sits ahead of Cameroon at the level of the continent, if we're looking at it that way calculating trophies and so on so uh, i do think that it was a huge surprise that he was coming in to replace someone like antonio consensa who had ended third uh, in the afcon in, in cameroon and not that we played badly look listen football is football and it is what it is we lost against egypt at the semi-finals on penalties you know there's no there's no shame in losing against egypt on on, on penalties and uh yeah so Against Burkina Faso, we managed to come from a couple of, of goals down to, to win that one. So I, I don't think that, you know, um, Rigo Besson came in, the time he came in, but to me, it wasn't the right, the timing wasn't perfect. And uh, yeah, as it would, as would have it, Cameroon went out there to, you know, put up a good performance against Algeria. Still with the skeleton of uh, for Antonio Consensio's side, you know, most of the players that he called up, uh, where, where players that were being used by Antonio Consensao. And uh, yeah, he, he got through to the World Cup. We applauded him for that. At the level of the World Cup, you know, as, as positive as we wanted to look, Cameroon did get past the group stage, something we've been trying to do, uh, I think, since, the since 1990 or so. So uh, yeah, so as positive as, as we wanted to look, uh, that wasn't, you know, a benchmark for... A Cameroonians to to follow, so yeah, it ended at that level. And like I said earlier on, we are going to to judge him at at the Afcon because he really has no uh, no room for error this time. He's had enough time to work with the team, and uh, yeah, we're just expecting him to to go out there, you know, and and uh, fly the country's flag high. I'm I'm gonna ask you some difficult questions about Rigo Bersang, okay? Critical questions. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. you can try to defend him if you do, or you can try to answer them if possible. I've heard okay. rumors. A lot of people say that it's not him that sets up the team. It's his assistant coach, Sebastian Minier. That's more the tactical 
manager, uh, the assistant coach. Uh, mm. Number one, any truth to that? Number two, did this this him discarding Andre Onana uh, during the World Cup? Was that really down to just Onana, you know, wanting to play out the ball with his feet, being more of a distributive goalkeeper and Song saying something and them having an argument and him being discarded in that way? Is that all there was to it? And do you feel confident that he can man manage the group and he can keep everybody happy uh, at the AFCON? But but the first question about Minier in particular. Okay, Sebastian Minier. Well, first of all, Sebastian Minier is a very well-known coach. He's... He you know, made his way around the African continent. He knows football on the continent so well. So he was brought in as the assistant coach of uh, Rigobert Song. But I tell you what, even Rigobert Song has said in his presses, je suis le sélectionneur manager. He's there to, you know, pass on what he had in his days. We call it in Cameroon, the grinta, you know, that that belief that we could go leadership. through every other storm. We could leadership. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, show the players how it's done when they wear the national jersey. And talking about tactics, yes, of course, Sebastian Minier hugely adds up to any tactical, you know, dispositions Cameroon ha- Cameroon puts out on on match days. Kurikobelson contributes his quarter. He too is uh, a graduate from Clermont-Ferrand in in France, so he's a coach. He is a coach. He has a clear knowledge about football. So they both work hand in gloves, but certainly Super Simbinye does more of uh, the tactical work and putting, you know, uh, out uh, tactical dispositions on game days. And, and the, the dispute with Onana, um, him managing, you know, the players' personalities. Oh, yes. We know Abubakar can have a personality, a very strong personality as well. Is there any fears that he can clash again with players and... Or, or do you think he's be, going to be able to manage the, the group of players and the Eagles well this time around? I think he, he's, you know, he's more used to that position now. When it happened with Donana at the level of the World Cup, you know, he would have handled it in a better way if he had, you know, worked with the team for, for longer, for a longer time. But uh, it wasn't handled in the best possible way, per me. Because uh, what that did to the player, you know, he retired internationally before the state had to get involved. And now he's coming back from retirement. And we're getting talks of, okay, all these talks of Onana wants to, you know, play another game in the EPL, uh, probably against Tottenham before coming for the AFCON. This, you know, it's all subplot to what happened in Qatar because Onana retired from the national team when Manchester United were going into purchase this goalkeeper, they knew that he was still understood with his national team career. So now, it puts them, the player and the team in a difficult situation because the state had to come and Onana came out from international retirement. Had it been United went in for Onana, when he was still, you know, actively done in the national team jersey, they would know that, okay, at the AFCON period, we are going to lose the goalkeeper. Now it puts us all in a difficult you know, situation because the all, all parties have to negotiate and see the best possible solution. And the way things are going, probably Onana might miss our first game. All this is they are just subplots to what you know happened in Qatar that is coming back to haunt us. So I don't think that he would have handled the Onana saga in, in a better way had it been, you know, he was uh this long into the job. But now I don't think we're going to be having any such situations. First of all, you spoke of Vincent Abubakar. He is uh, outspoken. But there's one thing about Abubakar, he's very respectful and uh, he's a good leader as well, but you cannot keep his mouth shut. You know, when he thinks that this is not correct, he's just going to point it out. And uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Pretty much. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about the starting 11 for Cameroon. Um, at the AFCON, you guys were playing a 4-3-3 mostly. Um, yeah. Do you expect to continue to play in that formation? Uh, now that Mbuemo is out, who's going to replace him on the right wing? If you could just take us through from goalkeeper to striker and maybe just a small sentence after each player that you name so you can tell us a, a small description about who they are and their strengths and their weaknesses. Yeah, uh, I think at the goalkeeping compartment, we have four goalkeepers. That includes uh, Andrew Nana, Fabrice Ondua, winner of the 2017 AFCON. I'm sure you know him pretty well. And uh, Onana's cousin, they, yeah? Yeah, Onana's cousin. There's Ngapandimbu as well, uh, Marseille prodigy. And uh, equally, there's Davis Sipasi, the guy who played the two other games when, when Onana was uh, was out of camp in the world. Small interruption. I saw internet rumors that Epasi was a nephew of a sports minister. Is that true or is that just internet rumors? <laughs> or... <laughs> 
you know, you'd always see those, you'd always see those rumors, but the party has, um, he's linked up with, with the sports minister. He has okay. a, a family link with him, but you know, it's not due to that. That's been, yeah, he's still a good goalkeeper. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's, sure. he's a good enough goalkeeper. Maybe he's not had enough game time with Abha in the Saudi Pro League, but whenever we've put him out there, you know, he's defended the colors bravely of the of the Lions. So I think on a good day, on any other day, if Onana is fit and he's been training with the team, uh, not arriving a day before the game, though, or the day on the game, he's going to pretty much start. But uh, in the absence of Onana, then we might just go for Fabrice Ondoi Bogo. Uh, who, by the way, played the last two games of the Nobitable Lions at at level of the World Cup uh, qualifiers, 2026 World Cup qualifiers. He played against uh, Libya. Uh, he came on as a sub against uh, against Mauritius. So that's that at at that level. And at the level of uh, the the center half, we have uh, Harold Mukudi. Harold Mukudi played the the 2021. 20, uh, Afghan year in Cameroon. Remember that he missed a penalty against uh, Egypt, and he was gone for a long, long time before just coming back. You know, against against Burundi. And equally, we have Jean Charles Castelletto, who has been one of the more frequently used defenders, centre halves, uh, with uh, with a national team. This Uma Gonzalez as well. He he's now in the Saudi Pro League, very aggressive defender. Uh, he too plays in the centre half position, but on a on a day that you know they want to tweak tactically or something like that, Jean Charles Castelletto has been used as right back by Rigobert Song before, I think on one or two occasions. So he too could fill up in the right back position. But then out and out right backs in the squad, there's uh, Junior Chamade. He plays with Stoke City in the championship in England. Uh, equally, he will not provide the best going forward, but then defensively, he's solid. That's because uh, in the right back position we we lost someone like Fire Collins Goran, like I mentioned earlier on, he was lead assist provider. Yeah, he made a long time without having a club. He just got a club in Serbia, but before the Afcon, you know, he didn't have a club. So probably the most reason why the most reason that can be pointed out as why he didn't make this 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 team because he played in the 2017 Afcon, 2019 Afcon, 2021 Afcon, and uh, equally there's Malcolm Bukele of uh, Bordeaux. He too can fill in as a right back. And then there's Enzo Chato, son of uh, Bill Chato. I, I know you remember that name. I, I know sure, you remember legend. that name, Bill Chato. Sorry about that. <laughs> I know you remember that name, Bill Chato. No, for sure. Legend, legend. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he's the son of uh, Bill Chato. He too can, can fill in that position. He plays for Montpellier in, in France. So, yeah, at, at the level of the left back, there's no Tolu, plays his club football for Seattle Sundowns. Very aggressive uh, left back moving forward. He has his, you know, lacoons, but uh, he's a very aggressive uh, left back and difficult to get past. And um, equally in that in that left back position, uh, there is this young gentleman, Darling Youngwa. Yeah, Darling Youngwa. That's the name I was looking for. Darling Youngwa. He he plays his club football in in France. He has more moving forward. Uh, but but uh, defensively, you know, you could fancy you no know, Tolu. But I think he, he's he's gotten into the head of the coach because in the last couple of matches, Dalim Yunga, who plays for Lorient in um, in France, you know, has played most of his last couple of games. He's uh, and he called the foot the Brazari graduate uh, here in Cameroon. So he's a very solid, uh, good, you know, left back going forward. He he brings a lot to the table. Now at the level of the the midfield compartment. You told me there's a lot yeah, of midfielders but, that are missing, yeah, like Angla and like. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Who, who's going to replace them? Of, who's who's the replacements? Ah, uh, the the it's quite difficult to see, but but then I, I think uh, Ivan Neyu, Ivan Neyu is a quality midfielder. He has played yeah. the last couple of games as well, and uh, yeah, he. I like him because he, he can carry the ball. Too. I feel like. On the ball, he's uh, he offers something different than uh, some other Cameroonian midfielders. You know, I watched him a little yes, bit at yes. Saint Etienne. Technically, technically, he has he has something in him that our other midfielders turn out to, to lack. You know, on on a, on a good day, he's a very good good midfielder. He uh, is one who has not really had you know a time that he has solidified himself in the team, but this time around, he played you know a last two games in a World Cup qualifiers and. I think it was enough to take him to the AFCON 
And at the AFCON, I do think that he he will do enough he will do enough to earn his his, his spot as, as a starter in in that team. And um, yeah, there's a newcomer Nathan Dwala. He plays his club football here in Cameroon for Victoria United. I don't think he's going to uh, be starting any games, but uh, he was just taking there probably for the experience. And uh, there's Andre Franz Zambuangisa, a, a name he made the the fifth pro squad in uh, the, the last calf award. 2023 cup. I was he made he made the fifth pro squad, one of two Cameroonians to make that squad. I think he and uh, Andrew Nana did. So uh, it'll be a great balance about those two starting starting with them. Uh, equally at, at the midfield compartment, who else who else, who else is going to be starting at the midfield? Uh, because there is uh, there's Olivier there's Cham, there's, Benjamin there's Elliott Jumbi as well. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Olivier Cham is uh, one who has had his injury problems. Yeah, but he he's good enough. He can he can start games and offer something different. Uh, there's equally Elio Jungi who plays in the third year in France. I don't think uh, he can really pull out the rabbit out of the hat as well, you know. Uh, but then he was brought, he was uh, ferried to the tournament for probably to for to to get experience, and uh, yeah. Like you mentioned, Cham, probably maybe Cham, Ivan Nuyu, uh, Zambu and Gisa, if we're looking at it from that perspective in the, in the middle. And then of the on path. the front line, is there any chance that it's not Ikambi, Abu Bakar, and then who's going to replace Mbuemo? Or is Ikambi not even guaranteed to start at Abu Bakar? I think Ikambi is guaranteed to start. He, amongst the uh, players, our national team players, he has the best goal per game ratio since making his debut in 2015, I think. So uh, when he wears the national team, he's a different animal, but he's not scored in the last couple of games, but take nothing away from him. At the last AFCON year in Cameroon, he was second in a goal scoring chart with five goals. Abu Bakr had eight goals. So I think uh, Tukoy Kambi Kal, who plays his club football for Abha, he was transferred from the French league to Saudi. I think he, he has enough to, to start our games. Equally, uh, you mentioned Vincent Pati Abubaka, and uh, yeah, it's difficult to see beyond Abubaka in a national team jersey. But here's a fun fact, Yemahe. Vincent Abubaka has not been a certain starter for our team for the Afghans that were played out of Cameroon. In Cameroon, he was a starter. But remember, in uh, 2019, he was injured. Remember that in uh, 2017, Hugo Bruce used him as a sub. Mm. But then he scored <laughs> so, in the final. Uh, he came up big. He scored in the finals. He came off, he came off the bench to score in the finals. So it would be interesting to see how he performs out of the country, especially now that all eyes are on him and he might be, be, be starting the game. And uh, now, since François Régis Mouguet wasn't able to come for personal reasons, he has been replaced by Moumi Ngamalu. Moumi Ngamalu... He's a very good player. He plays his club football in Russia. He was part of the World Cup expedition as well. And he plays like he has three lungs. Very energetic. He bombs up and down the, the channels. And I was kind of worried why he was left out in the first place. And then we just had to bring him in because, you know, uh, it didn't make any sense to me why Mirage Mugil be. The Afghan and he left out, but then Regis Mugi, as would have it, uh, decided to, to stay back at, at Marseille. And then uh, Muminga Malu did the list. So I think he's just going to bump, bump in, in there. But then there is Nkudu, who, you know, is our most informed player. And it will be criminal too for <laughs> Coach Rico Besson to leave Kudu aside. So it's not really certain. Oh, but I think certainly Kudu would be a starter on the wings. You know, uh, the, the the other side you might have uh, Abu, uh, you might have uh, Kal Toko Ikambi and Muminga Mali about to lead out. But I think since Muminga Mali came in uh, later in the camp, probably maybe we'll have Ikambi and Josh Kevin Kudu. Josh Kevin Kudu. Uh, performed very well for us in the FIFA FIFA window last last year. 
He scored one of uh, three goals against Mauritius coming off the bench. And when he went for, back to his club side, he's been scoring goals for fun. I think he's the second behind Cristiano Ronaldo in the Saudi Pro League. 14 goals. 14 goals to, in 18 matches, yeah. It's 14 impressive. goals in, in, in 18 matches to his name. Uh, so, Georges Kevin Kudu, uh, former French youth international, could be uh could be uh would be will be a starter and let, let me take you back to the midfield the names are just popping up now there is olivier kemen as well who you know makes a, a solid player he his contract you know he his contract has been terminated with case race Paul in turkey but he too is a former french youth international and the games he's played with our national team he just made us think of a certain bami modest so <laughs> Uh, he's a very good player, Olivier came in, and I, I wouldn't be surprised too if Coach Rigoberto decides to start with maybe Ivan Neyu, Olivier came in, Andre Fang, Zambo, and Gisa in the middle of the park. So, in fact, that is my ideal uh, midfield for, for the Nobuti uh, Lions. Honestly, when I look at that that lineup, I think it's a pretty strong Cameroonian side. I think some people are not as optimistic on Cameroon, but when I, on paper, I, I really do like them. Um, so, so Cameroon has, you know, uh, they can pick a, a a whole bunch of stars that play on this team. Uh, we have huge names. Abubakar, of course. Uh, Angisa, of course. Uh, Zambo Angisa. Uh, Andre Onana. Um, if you had to pick one player that you could say, this is the one star, meaning this player is going to, in the big moments, he's the one that's going to carry the national team. Who do you think it can be uh, out of the starting 11? Who do you think it could be the one star player? That's out of the starting eleven. The players who are seated on on the on the bench. I think now. I think. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I meant. I meant from from the starting eleven. From the starting eleven. Okay, from from the starting eleven. Yeah. I think our star player, our star player in this competition, the face of of the competition is Andrew Nana, but uh, talking of changing the games that would entail goals, Andrew Nana impacts the game by keeping out the goals, but we need goals to win games. I think that would be Vincent Pati Abubakar, uh, for the sole reason that he, you know, uh, is a lethal uh, goal scorer with the side. Last co last competition, he, he scored eight goals uh, in the last uh, African competition that was hosted here in Cameroon. Uh, he's the one that, you know, all of the other players are looking up to, you know, when things are not, when things are tricky, they're not going uh, his way, we turn to be in difficulties. So, I think Van Vincent Pati Abubakar is the player, a star player for, for the for the tournament. And equally, probably a surprise package of the tournament would be George That was Kevin my next Kudu. question. Who's gonna be <laughs> one player that's like unknown or not very well known, maybe underrated, that you think can explode uh for, for Cameroon? Somebody that the whole continent is gonna say, wow, like where where did he come from? I think I think George Kevin Kudu is is the player that uh, others would be surprised with. Because he's blessed with natural ability. He's played for Tottenham Moscow. He's played for Olympic Yune. He's played for, for Besiktas. So you don't play for those clubs without, you know, having enough quality. And uh, yeah, he's blessed with peace. He's, he's played with trickery, God given talent, ability. And uh, yeah, he can he can he can pull the rabbit out of the hat on his day. So he's been doing that for his club side Damak. In, in Saudi, so I do think that uh, he he can really you know uh, be the surprise package for this team. Equally, there is a certain Lionel Atebambida who plays for Dynamo Football Club of Douala here in Cameroon. One of the two local players that were called up, uh, he scored seven goals for Dynamo Football Club of Douala last season. He was with PW Social Club of Bamenda. He scored nine goals all through the season. Uh, he too is a uh, very potent goal scorer, and he has more to his game. For his hold up play, is uh, brilliant. He's you know uh, his pace as well. You know, is his will to always get in there and get in between the goals. So I don't think that if Rigobertson gives him the chance, then we might see another star in 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 uh, Leonardo Bambida. He ended by the way. He ended third in the Ballon d'Or awards here in Cameroon uh, back in December, organized by the Cameroon Football Federation. So he too is an interested player. And we're running out of time here. We just have three or four minutes left. But uh, Giovanni, before I go, and I, before I ask you for your prediction, which is going to be my final question, uh, when I was in Cameroon for the AFCON last time around, I remember some criticism of Andre Frank Zembo and Gisa because I felt like the public 
were expecting more from him. And this was like something that was a discourse that was happening throughout the tournament. We know that he had a, a fantastic year with Napoli last season, and he was one of the main you know, contributors to them winning the Scudetto alongside uh, his Nigerian colleague, Victor Oziman. Um, has he gotten over that with the Cameroonian public? Do they still expect more from him? Or uh, is there still a little bit of frustration with uh, Zambo and Gisa um, in his position in midfield? Well, Mahe, you're going to get that a lot in Cameroon. You're going to get a lot of stick, especially if uh, they're looking up to you. But Zambo and Gisa has always said that he's playing for the national team and he plays as per what the coach expects him to you know, play. Uh, he's playing under Coach Rigo Besson Bahana. Last time out, he was playing under... Antonio Consensao. His last game in uh, Cameroon against Mauritius in the World Cup qualifiers before uh, the other game in Libya, he was very, very well lauded by the fans. He even had a standing ovation. In that game, he was a skipper of the team. So he has a, a, a little different role with the with our national team. And uh, yeah, they expect him to, to be more, you know, uh, Box to box midfield, if I may put it that way, but defensively they they expect a lot from him. While at at Napoli, you know, there's Robotka who can do the job defensively. Uh, at times he can bump up the top and uh, get in between the goals as well. But the national team, the way we set up, you know, if he he plays, there are a couple of players that if he plays with, then our fans would be more impressed. For instance, uh. If he plays with Ivan Neyo and Olivier Kemen, Olivier Kemen could do the, you know, the dirties, go out there and, and get the, the ball and then feed him with. But uh, if he's playing with uh, probably Elio Jungi, for instance, and uh, maybe Ivan Neyo, he is expected to do the defensive duty, you know, and, and then dish out the ball. So uh, fans have not really come to terms of how he's been utilized in a national team. And that's the reason why he's getting a lot of stick. In fact, every other person gets stick in, in Cameroon. The only other player I've not heard, you know, fans go after in a very vicious way is Vincent Abubakar. He's a really nice guy, you know, nice to them, very quiet life. Aside from Abubakar, Onana is getting a proper lashing here in Cameroon as well, you know. The other star players are, <laughs> are getting real stick. So I do think that that's it is what, what it is. It's a country of um, over 26 they million expect a lot inhabitants. Because, they yeah, expect you guys a lot. They expect have a lot. lot of history, and every other so... person is a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have we have two minutes. We have, we got to go quickly. Uh, this is the final question. According to the sporting public, and, and you just told me they're very, they expect a lot. What would be a good tournament for the Cameroon uh, Indomitable Lions in Cote d'Ivoire? Would would, for example, a semifinal be a good tournament? Would a final, would winning it be the only thing that constitutes a good tournament? And what would be a bad tournament too? I think a good tournament for Cameroon at any category will be winning the tournament at the AFCON, maybe at the World Cup, get it to the semifinal, so final. Would no, be no, 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 I'm just talking tournament. about AFCON. I don't care yeah, about Yeah, World yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just giving an example. Like in the AFCON, we expected to win. As we arrive at the AFCON, we are expected to win the, co the competition. And uh, yeah, so aside from winning the competition, it's it's not a good tournament. Even if we make the semifinals, there's still be critics. But the semifinal will be, we'll take that before the tournament. If you ask Cameroonians, we're going to take it. But once we get to the tournament and then we progress from the first round, second round, quarterfinals, semifinals, we are expected to win. So uh, yeah, a bad tournament for us. Or be crashing out of the group stage or round of 16s, you know, crashing out of the group I was stage. Going to ask, yeah, round of 16 would be bad too, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it would be really, it would be really bad. It would be a bad tournament because we're in a group and the AFCON has been extended. So we have to have the ability to at least be the one of three or one of four third places, you know. Uh, we cannot just crash out of the, of the tournament like that. You know, for God's sake, there's uh, the Gambia, there's Guinea in our group. No, no pushovers. With, no. with all the respect, yes. I know there are a lot of Gambians on your platform who would come after me. They, <laughs> they had a good competition here. They had a good tournament here in Cameroon. They made the quarterfinals. Guinea as well, there are no pushovers. So, uh, Senegal, you know, many would expect Senegal to top the group. But then, we would take that if Senegal manages to top the group. 
because we know how well they've been doing on the continent and their coach at UCC, the time he's been given to work with that team as well. But then crashing out of the group stage or the, the round of 16 would be a really bitter pill to swallow. It might lead to the sacking of, of, of Coach Rigobertson. Giovanni Bambe, thank you so, so much. Uh, that was a very enjoyable discussion. For those of you that liked what you heard, I'm going to put his social media in the description below. Please go follow him. Uh, he will be in Cote d'Ivoire uh, this week coming up. And uh, you can follow all of his coverage of the Cameroonian national team and other African national teams uh, on his social media below. So uh, you can still probably hear my neighbor drilling. I apologize about that. But we're going to wrap up this podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the African Five Aside podcast brought to you by africasacountry.com. Keep it locked as we continue to preview all 24 teams at the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. Peace. <laughs>